Hi everyone and welcome along to part two of the diversity type project where we're making a display font. In the last video we looked at preparing your glyphs project, cleaning up vectors and correcting path directions in glyphs. In this video we're going to look at adding in missing glyphs and also making this font a little bit more dynamic and diverse by adding contextual alternatives. So let's start by finding those missing glyphs. So everything's been placed and we have just one character that's missing and we're missing the question mark. So if you've got a missing glyph, you will find it in wherever it is. So this one's part of the punctuation and we're going to find it under, I think, other. So there we are. Missing glyph is question mark. So if you go to other and right click, that'll bring that up and you're just going to generate that. So we've got this awesome question mark from Poppy, who's one of the Superstar Arts members. And if we copy and paste that, we're going to need to do a little bit of cleaning up because we've got some extra nodes. Just gonna, just gonna scale it up ever so slightly like that, and make it come just below the baseline because we want this to be optically correct. So this is obviously a hand-drawn um, question mark, and that's why there's lots and lots of nodes involved. And there's one that's just causing a problem down there. So again, like from the last video. We're going to select everything and we're going to tidy up paths. Now that didn't work frustratingly, but maybe we try it again. Nope, it didn't work again. So this time we're just going to have to do it manually. So click the top node, as you can see, I think with this one actually, it's just a little bit too close. So if we click that node there and just remove it or maybe remove the one next to it because we don't want to disturb it too much. And that should be that. Yep, that looks great. So before we move on to the contextual alternatives, I just want to show the ampersand that's in this font because it's absolutely stunning. This has been supplied by Morgan Van Tor and honestly it's just one of the best looking ampersands I've seen for a long time and the construction of it is pretty much impeccable. As you can see it follows near enough all the correct rules of, of typography so you've got your extremes on both um, X and Y axis is and everything is running either vertical or horizontal to create those really good looking curves. Yeah, I've not seen anything this good for, for quite some time. It's really, really nice. And yeah, just fantastic work. Really good. It's a pleasure to be working with stuff like this. So we're almost there with this font now. Everything's in place and what we're now going to do is add a little bit more dynamic element to it and a little bit more diversity into this font. So what I want to be able to do is whenever you type a double character, for instance, a T, T, I want it to swap out the second T for a slightly different T. And with this font, because everything's technically, it's got a lower and an uppercase, but visually it's all uppercase. So what we'll do is using the contextual alternatives, we're going to swap out whenever TT is, um, is typed, we're going to swap out the last T for either an uppercase or a lowercase T. So this is how we do that. First, we're going to want to 
set everything up for our contextual alternatives. And we do this by going to features and clicking the plus button. And you'll see a lot of different stuff down here. But all we want is one called C Alt for contextual alternatives. Double click and that will pop it into there. Now this is time for a little bit of coding, but it doesn't, it's, it's not a huge amount of coding. What we're going to do is type sub as in substitute and we'll start with the lowercase t's. So t space t and then an apostrophe space by so substitute t t for the uppercase t and then we'll finish that off with a semicolon and that should be everything so if we update it gives us substitute t by t now what I'm going to do is copy that and paste it in again and do the reverse. So we'll substitute uppercase T and uppercase T for lowercase T and just update again. So let's try that now. Just going to open up a, a letter T there and I'll show you it without the contextual alternatives turned on so if we type TT together and uppercase uppercase T together it looks like that and obviously in a in a font where every character is completely different to the other and there's no real standard look a double T together or a double letter together will look really odd and out of place so swapping those characters out will make it look far more in keeping with the uh, with the look of the font So if we go down to features down here, you can see that we've got contextual alternatives now and once we turn that on You can see that it swaps out the last letter for the uppercase letter So if we were to Type a, a word with double T in patter and use the uppercase versions you can see that we've now got two words that look completely different even though they're exactly the same or within the exact same font and you can do this with any any um, set of letters in there as well you can go far deeper with this and get all kinds of different um, contextual alternatives based on what characters have already been typed. Looks awesome, types well and we've managed to keep so much of that detail especially in this R which is extremely detailed. that's it for this one thank you once again for watching and if you want to find out more about the diversity type project and the charities that it supports please visit diversitytype.com thanks again to people of print who got me involved in the project it's been an absolute pleasure to build this font and get to use all these amazing characters that have been submitted so i hope you found this video helpful if you liked the video, please click like and subscribe. And I suppose all that's left to say is cheers, and I'll see you in the next one.